Hey, what's up guys? I'm Dave from findyournextguitar.com. And in this video, I wanted to clearly explain the difference between forward bow and back bow when it comes to adjusting your truss rod and then how to, how to clearly discern it, discern the difference between the two and then which way you should turn your Allen key to adjust the truss rod once you know if you have a forward bow or a backwards bow. So where this gets a little bit confusing, at least to me, is when we talk about forward bow and backward bow, what we're referring to is actually the headstock. Um, not so much that the headstock is actually bending um, in some extreme circumstances or in some really poorly built guitars, you may see that. Um, but we're talking about kind of the illusion of how the headstock looks. So if you have a forward bow, the neck is actually gonna appear that it's in a U shape dipping backwards towards you, the guitarist, but the headstock is going to appear that it's slightly tilted forward. And then if you have a backwards bow, you have the opposite where the neck of the guitar is going to be protruding outwards away from you, the guitarist, and the headstock is going to be tilted backwards, or at least have the appearance of that. And when I talk about when you're looking at it, um, I'm talking about you would have the vantage point of you either turn the guitar upside down and you're looking at it from the, the butt end of the guitar to the headstock, or you're looking at it from the other direction. And it's going to appear the same way. And typically the, the easiest way I think to see it is to flip your guitar upside down. And then if this would be your head, you're, you're looking at it from this angle here um, in, in both of these. So you're, you're looking down the neck of the guitar from the bottom of the guitar towards the headstock. And what you're going to see if you have a forward bow is around the first and second frets and then around the maybe 20th fret, you're going to have the strings touching, perhaps, um, depending on how severe the bow is, or you're going to have some dead notes there or the frets are going to fret out where when you press down on it, it's not going to ring out because it's so close to the fret that the string doesn't have any room to vibrate. And then with a backwards bow, you're going to have somewhat of the opposite. The neck is going to be protruding outwards in this direction. So like towards the center of the guitar, the neck is going to be protruding forward. You're going to have some dead notes around this area of the guitar. You will have some fretting out and fret buzz around there. And then around the top, um, you'll probably have a little bit of relief. And it's just gonna feel really uncomfortable to play in both of these, um, depending on how extreme the circumstances. And then in particular with the forward bow, you should notice a pretty big gap right here in the middle of the neck. So those are both pretty easy to identify once you know what to look for. Um, and then once you have identified if you have a forward bow, the general rule of thumb is you want to turn your Allen wrench or Allen key or whatever truss rod adjustment tool that you have for your guitar, you want to turn it counterclockwise. So if you look at an analog clock, it's gonna be going the opposite direction that the clock turns. And then vice versa, if you have a backwards bow. If you have a backward bow, you want to turn the Allen key clockwise. So the same direction that an analog clock would turn. And the one thing that I, I would like to point out is I have found and worked on some guitars where this is actually the opposite. So when you go to adjust the truss rod, the general rule of thumb, you always want to use a quarter tone, quarter turn. Um, or maybe even eighth turn, especially if you're not sure which way that the truss rod is set up, or especially if you're not sure if you have a dual action or single action truss rod. So, you know, the, the less is more in this circumstance. Um, a lot of times a very, very small turn um, can make big adjustments. And it's just a matter of playing around with your guitar and figuring out what works for your specific guitar that you're working on. And um, that's pretty much it.